What's going on gardeners? It's Sunday, January 30th, and we just had a week's worth of the coldest weather we've had in over four years here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, but spring will be here before we know it. Today, I'm going to show you a complete guide on how to start your warm weather vegetable seedlings from seed. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Every season, the first warm weather vegetable that I start from seed are tomatoes. And that's because tomatoes generally have the longest period of time from starting the seed to transplanting out in the garden. For most of us, you want to start your tomato transplants from seed anywhere from six to 10 weeks before your last average frost date. For me, the magic number is about eight weeks. That's my personal preference. Now here I have a mixture of six cell trays to start my seedlings, as well as some peat pellets that you can see right here. And it doesn't matter what arrangement you use, peat pellets or standard seed starting trays that you just fill with a basic potting mix. The reason why I'm using both is because I didn't have enough peat pellets on hand to do all 66 tomatoes that I'm starting, and I didn't have enough seed trays on hand to do all 66 tomatoes either. So so I had to blend the two together. If you're starting your tomato transplants in regular seed trays such as these, I strongly recommend that you label them all first. That will make your life a whole lot easier. And if you're starting peat pellets, the way I like to do it is I make a little uh, design right here. This is a 12 cell peat pellet tray. I label them one, two, three, four, and I put what the variety names are there. And then I also label the bottoms of these peat pellet trays one, four, uh, one, two, three, four as well. So that way I know the order of everything. Now that I showed you two different mediums for you to start your seeds in, let me show you how to begin the process. Now for a pro tip, one of the hardest things for you to start your seedlings is actually grabbing the seeds themselves and handling them because they can be hard to grip. One tool I like to use is a chopstick. If you dip the end of the chopstick in water, it makes it a really nifty and easy tool for you to grab onto the individual seeds. And it's also great for poking holes in the planting medium or fluffing up your peat pods. So first we'll start off with these peat pods or these peat pellets, whatever you want to call them. And be, uh, these have all been pre-moistened with hot water that was nearly boiling, uh, which hydrates them very quickly. And then I allow them to cool down back to room temperature. Uh, so I like to take this chopstick and just lightly fluff them up because tomato seedlings need to be planted about a quarter of an inch deep. Uh, which is a lot shallower than you think. There is no reason that you need to aggressively bury your tomato seedlings. There's just no need for that. Uh, they're actually better planted closer to the surface than they are buried deeply. So don't worry about the depth of your seedling. Only about a, a quarter to an eighth of an inch is what you need. Now that they're all fluffed up, I'll show you how to place the seeds. So now I'm going to dump the seeds in my hand, just like that. And then I'm going to take my chopstick and make the tip just a little bit wet. And that is going to grab onto these seeds. So simply grab them and place them in the, in the appropriate peat pellet that you already have pre-labeled. Now you'll notice that I actually placed two seeds in each pellet. And that's because when it comes to growing tomato seeds or really any kind of seed, uh, you want to overseed, which means placing more than one per individual tray. And that's because no seedling or no type of seed has a 100% germination rate. Some of them are not going to come up. So by placing two per cell, you have a much better chance that something is going to come up. And in the off chance, that both of them fail in one of the cells. Some of the others will have doubles, so you'll be able to split them in half and make up the difference. Now we're going to simply take our chopstick and gently press the seeds into the peat medium, just, just about a quarter of an inch, like I said. You can push them right down. And then after they've been pressed down, you just take the back edge of the chopstick and you tamp them down. And that's why I really like this chopstick. It's kind of like an all-purpose tool for poking holes into the medium, uh, grabbing your seeds, and then tamping them down at the end. 
And now we'll do the exact same thing for the other varieties. Now after you place your seeds, it's very important that you don't over moisten any of them. You don't want them to be sopping wet. However, in this case, they seem a little bit on the drier side. So I actually like using a turkey baster just to put a few drops on each individual peat pellet just to moisten the tops. A turkey baster is actually a really great tool to use to water your fragile seed starts. When starting your seedlings in standard six cell trays or other trays like this, we're going to approach things differently. We are still going to use our chopstick. However, instead of fluffing up the top, we're just going to poke two quarter inch holes in every single one of these individual trays. And that is going to be where we are going to place our seeds. And just like the peat pellets, we are going to use our chopstick to gently place the seeds in the holes that we just punctured. And then we are simply going to tamp the mixture down. You may want to check it over with your finger just to make sure that everything's sealed and that there are no gaps, but don't press hard. There's no need to firmly compact the medium. You want it to stay a little bit light and loamy there. Now that I showed you how to do that as a sample, we are simply going to do that to every single variety in this tray. All of the seeds have been planted, tamped down, and moistened to the proper level. Now we just have to wait for the seeds to germinate. And one of the critical items that you need for the most success is one of these seedling heat mats. And that's because warm weather crops like tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, squash, watermelon, etc., they require warm soil temperatures in order to germinate. And most of our houses, particularly the floors and countertop surfaces, aren't warm enough and germination can take way too long or it could fail altogether. So make sure to get yourself a seedling heat mat if you want this exact one. It's linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. It's very inexpensive. And this is, this is a 10 inch by 21 inch basically uh, seedling heat mat. It's perfectly sized for one of these 72 cell trays these typical trays that you can buy at pretty much every big box store. Now using these seedling heat mats, we can expect tomatoes to start germinating in as little as five days and most should be up within seven to 10 days. However, it is very important that as soon as the tomato seedlings start germinating, you quickly move them into direct sunlight, either underneath grow lights or in front of a very sunny window, because if you're not in very strong sunlight with this heat mat on the bottom, they will become very leggy and they will grow too tall and you will have to throw them out. So it's very important that you monitor this every single day, look for germination, and when the first bits of germination start, you need to move them under lights or in front of the sun, or alternatively, just keep them in a sunny area or underneath grow lights at all times. Once they germinate, you can immediately remove the seedling heat mat because too much bottom heat will make them leggy, and that is not what you want. You only use the seedling heat mat until the first handful of tomatoes break the ground and start germinating. Another thing you can do is you can place one of these domes that come with the trays on top of it and that will hold in some of the moisture and prevent evaporation. If you choose to use this dome, you're going to want to vent it daily to let fresh air in and not create an anaerobic condition where you'll start getting rot and damping off disease. So I usually only use this lid for the first couple days and when I see the very first seedling break ground, I immediately remove it and I don't use it anymore. So now I will wait for all of the seedlings to germinate and once we have germination, I will follow up. It's Tuesday, February 2nd and I wanted to give you an update on my seedlings so you see how they behave in the two different mediums. Now, some people claim that they don't really care for the peat pellets, and I don't understand why. I happen to love the peat pellets, and one of their benefits is how quickly seedlings germinate in them. You can see seedlings are coming up all throughout the peat pellets. I count at least 13 seedlings growing in the peat pellets. Here you can see the various tomato plants starting to break the surface of the peat pellets. They're all looking good and because they already germinated, it's now time to remove them off this heat mat and to just put them in a sunny location and not have them on bottom heat because bottom heat will make them grow very quickly and if they're not in very strong sunlight, they will get very leggy. So now's the time that we move them into the strong sunlight and get them off that heat mat. 
As for the normal seed trays, I see one has just germinated right here. I see another one has just germinated right here. And then I see all the way over here, I see another one has germinated in this cell right there. You can just make it out. It's just broken the surface. Other than that, I, I do not see anything else that has broken the surface in these seed trays. So we will have to give it a few more days before everything germinates. It's now February 15th, and as you can see, every single cell has a plant growing in them, with most of them having two plants. I had very high germination rates using this method, and it has been tremendously successful. One thing I want you to notice is the difference in leaves on these plants. When seedlings germinate, the first set of leaves are typically elliptical and do not match the rest of the leaves on the plant. This first set of leaves that you can see right here are known as the false leaves, and their only purpose is to break through the top of the soil after germination. After the set of false leaves, the next set and every set after will be the true leaves. Here you can see right here the true leaves, which are jagged and more closely resemble the classic tomato leaf pattern we all know. Once your seedlings develop this first set of true leaves, you can begin fertilizing them. For fertilizer, do not use granulated organic types of fertilizer. They require the soil microbiology to break down the fertilizer to be usable by the plants, and there is no real soil microbiology in these little seedling trays, so granulated organics are of little to no value. What you need to use at this stage are water-soluble fertilizers because the nutrients are fully digestible and available. I discourage the use of water-soluble organics like fish emulsion at this stage because they smell terrible and they will stink up your house if you're starting your seedlings indoors and they can attract pests that can damage your fragile seedlings if you leave them outdoors. The best thing to use at this stage are actually water-soluble synthesized fertilizers like miracle Grow water-soluble crystals because they are odorless and won't attract pests. I recommend buying those fertilizers and using them at one quarter to one half of the recommended dosage on the back of the package. Do not use full strength dosages until the seedlings get to be three to four inches tall and have multiple sets of well-developed true leaves. If you want more information on fertilizing, I will link to a quick two minute how-to video above for my second channel, Two Minute Garden Tips. And that right there is pretty much everything you need to know to start your own annual vegetable garden from seed. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them as best as I can. So everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Also check out my spread shop while you're there for custom merch. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Dale, what's all that crazy stuff falling from the sky out there? Oh, that looks terrible. Oh, why would anybody want to have any fun in that? What do you think, buddy? Oh, Dale has never seen snow before. This is his first time ever seeing snow.